so um, there is this software um, that we need to download for the class today. It's a little bit of complicated to download though. There's a couple questions about uh, what platforms are supported. Uh, so it is available on PC, Mac, and Linux. Uh, it is not available for iPad. Um, so it is available on Windows, um, but uh, you can use it free. So you will need to kind of sign up or have an account. Um, but yeah, it is uh, free for personal use. And yeah, there is options to just download Unity or download the hub. I suggest downloading the Unity hub. Let's get started. We're very, very happy to have Dan, um, who is a developer advocate um, at Unity. And you might wonder what type of job it is, right? He's going to tell you more about what that is. I can tell you that it's a really fun job. Um, so before we delve into today's conversation, uh, let's introduce Create and Learn a little bit. I know most of you have been our student for a while, so you probably know uh, what we are. Mostly we teach computer science classes in smaller groups with just three or four students. Um, but we also organize these kind of open class with lots of people attending, which is super fun. And we have experts from different companies like Dan himself uh, to come talk about um, how things are done in the real world. So we all know we're all learning a lot of, about coding, robotics, but actually knowing how things are done in the real world really inspire us and, uh, and knows that what else you can learn. So we'll have, let's welcome Dan to give us um, the presentation. Great, I saw thank you so much, I really loved it. So go ahead, Dan. All right, thank you very much. Um, you can all see my screen, I assume. Uh, so as mentioned, my name is Dan Miller. I work at Unity Technologies as an XR evangelist. Um, so this means I actually focus on virtual and augmented reality. I post a lot of fun content and just uh, kind of general Unity things on uh, Twitter. So um, maybe you can follow me there. Maybe you don't have a Twitter account, no big deal. Um, but I'm really excited to be here. I did see a lot of questions um, around kind of installing Unity and things like that. Um, a big part of this presentation is hopefully to just really inspire people. So if you can't get everything set up right now, or you don't have an account, um, that's okay. We will, uh, you know, this will go up online and you can always kind of watch it uh, at a later time. Um, there was some questions as well just about downloading and installing Unity and the Unity Hub. We recommend the Hub. Um, but yeah, so excited to be here. So first I'm going to start with an introduction, uh, just a little bit about myself. From there, I'll talk about what is Unity, uh, just as a company and a platform. And then I'll talk about some of the different teams at Unity. So kind of highlighting some individuals that work uh, with me and just kind of some of the different roles that are available um, and to think about when joining a big technology company like Unity. Uh, then we'll talk about some games made with Unity. Unity was really founded in the game development space and we are really the platform that powers a lot of video games in the, in the world. Uh, from there, I'll be doing a small workshop, just kind of getting introduced to Unity, um, and hopefully a couple people can kind of follow along, and we'll just, you know, show you a little bit about how it works, and then provide you with some additional resources on how to get started uh, and take your learning further. So, who am I? So, yeah, my name is Dan Miller. Um, I originally, you know, I'm a developer, so I have a background in computer science and I actually worked on, this is one of the first games I worked on, uh, and it's called Brick Witch. It's a small mobile game uh, that was kind of a block breaker. And for my entire career and a lot of my life as well, I've kind of been really uh, focused on video games. Uh, they're a big passion of mine and it's something I'm really excited about. And more recently, I've been really focused on both augmented and virtual reality. Um, so here's a couple small indie games that I worked on where I was a programmer working on these VR games. Um, they came out for a couple different VR platforms. Um, that's me up there in one of those screenshots. Um, and then I also play a lot of video games. More recently, I've been playing a lot of Animal Crossing. So that's me hanging out with uh, a couple villagers there in Animal Crossing. Um, and then me there at the, the fishing event. 
Um, and a really kind of unique and really fun part of my job is that I actually get to travel around. Um, there hasn't been some travel much lately, obviously with the global pandemic. Um, but in the past, I've gotten the opportunity for Unity to go and travel around and really talk to developers all over the world. Um, so there I am uh, in Paris with my co coworkers, and then there I am in uh, Tokyo, in Japan, with a big uh, Gundam structure there. Um, and so really the role of an evangelist or a developer evangelist is to kind of work closely with the Unity community uh, inspire and help developers and kind of just interact with the community. So we do a lot of speaking engagements, a lot of travel and things like that. It's really a unique opportunity and I feel really fortunate to be able to do it. Um, and it's a lot of fun. It's kind of the mix between being on the more technical side uh, as a developer and being able to talk and interact with a lot of uh, excited people in the community. So what is Unity? So really um, we're a kind of platform in itself. So at its core, we create what we call a game engine. So this is kind of the standalone piece of software um, that's available. Again, it's available on PC, Mac, and Linux. And it's really a core editor itself. And we started out in games, but as you'll see, we're kind of expanding beyond that. One of the really exciting things about Unity, and especially in my role, is we have a huge community. We have big developer events all over the world where thousands of people come out and they are able to kind of see some of the new features. We have a lot of engagement on our forums and other platforms. And there's just a really a lot of passionate people that use Unity. Um, the other thing that was kind of teased there in the beginning is we have offices all over the world. So we originally started in Denmark over 15 years ago uh, in Copenhagen, and that's still one of our largest offices. Um, but now we have over 44 offices in 16 different countries. Um, so really, really, we're a global company. I'm based here in the San Francisco Bay Area, and that's where our headquarters are now. But again, we have offices all over the United States, Canada, um, Europe, Asia, and more. Um, and as you'll see, we're started in games, and a lot of game development and a lot of games that you might be familiar with are made with Unity. But as more industries and more technology continues to come online, we're really expanding outside of games. So here's gonna be a short video that shows off some of the experiences that were made in Unity. So yeah, I saw a couple of people uh, recognize Ori, uh, and yep, that was a game uh, made in Unity. So now what I wanted to do is I wanted to take a little bit of a step back and highlight a couple of people who work for Unity. So Unity is a big technology company, and as part of that, we have lots of different roles and lots of different people who work on you know, some unique parts of the business as well as the platform itself. Um, so who works at Unity? So the first person I wanted to highlight here is Samantha, and she is actually based in our Singapore office, and she is a technical writer on the 2D Docs team. So this means that she specifically focuses on documentation uh, for all of our 2D tools and features. So she comes from a technical writing background where she had some experience in uh, kind of understanding how to write different tutorials and things like that. And that now helps our community by documenting all the new tools and features we have specifically focused uh, in 2D. 
Next, we have Crystal Garcia. So she is a senior business development manager, and she actually works on one of the non-gaming parts of our business. She focuses on helping out customers in the architecture, engineering, and construction space, helping them get involved in Unity and get started, uh, really kind of developing different solutions for their businesses. And last but not least, we have James uh, Turnage Lannan. And what he is, is he is a content producer on our live learning content. So what this means is that he works with the education team, building out a lot of this content that you may find online or at certain live events, and really kind of producing that content and helping manage it so that it can be the best that it can be. So I just kind of wanted to highlight that while Unity is a big technology company and there's a lot of software engineers and there's a lot of developers that work here, there's lots of different roles outside of those uh, kind of engineering roles that are available and still contribute you know, to the, the Unity company and the Unity business. So now I wanna shift and take a little bit of uh, highlighting some different games made with Unity. So as I've mentioned, Unity has really started out in this kind of game development space. And so a lot of different games are made with Unity. Um, and it's really where uh, a lot of our customers and things come from. So here is just uh, you know, a big kind of splash of a bunch of different games. And really to me, one of the most exciting things about uh, Unity is that it can be used to create a bunch of different types of games, games that uh, you know, tell interesting stories, games that are 2D, 3D, uh, AR, VR, and much, much more. We've had a lot of success on mobile, so a lot of mobile games are made with Unity, and really we're just seeing more and more exciting titles uh, come out every single day. So here's another short video. So now I just want to highlight uh, a couple different games that are made in Unity, and they kind of have some unique styles and things like that. So one of the first ones is Cuphead. So this was developed by Studio MDHR. It was actually originally built by two brothers in a small uh, town in Canada. And it had a lot of success, really uh, partly due to its really unique art style and its fun gameplay. Uh, and it's also kind of a co-op game. So it sold over 3 million copies and, and really has had a lot of kind of critical success. And one of the things uh, I haven't really highlighted yet is a big part of Unity is the ability to build your game or your application in one platform and then distribute it on a bunch of different platforms. So for example, Cuphead, Cuphead came out on both PC as well as Xbox One uh, and has kind of moved to different platforms as well, like Switch and things like that. So we really support all the different platforms that you might find uh, a game or application on. Uh, so the next one is Job Simulator. So this is kind of one of the big uh, virtual reality titles that came out with a lot of the kind of newest generation of VR hardware. So this is things like the Oculus as well as the Vive. Um, and it was, you know, released on all these major platforms. And it was originally started by 
um, a group of developers originally based in Boston, and then they relocated to Austin, Texas, and they've since kind of grown the team a lot. The company Alchemy Labs was actually acquired by Google, uh, so now they are a part of Google, and they're continuing to work on interesting and fun virtual reality games. Um, so this is kind of another story here. Uh, and then last but not least is Pokemon Go. So this was developed by Niantic uh, in collaboration with the Pokemon Company. And really it's one of the biggest uh, mobile games of all time. Uh, it had a early introduction to things like augmented reality, uh, as well as what we call geolocation data. So kind of knowing where you are uh, within the world using kind of Google Maps and things like that. Um, so uh, again, this was just kind of another big game where at Unity, we build the software and the platform in order to enable all of these different creators to create these interesting games and apps. All right, so that was a little bit about Unity. And now what I want to do is walk through a small hands-on workshop. Uh, and if you aren't able to download Unity or if you didn't create an account or things like that, that's not a big deal. I'm just gonna be kind of teaching you Unity at a very basic level to hopefully get you started and get you excited to continue on uh, with your learning journey. So let me just get set up over here really quickly. So the first thing we're gonna do is we'll just start by making a small physics game. So we're gonna create a new project, learn a little bit about the different panels within the editor itself. Then we're gonna add some objects, move some objects around, and finally end with some physics. Um, and so the style that I'm gonna to try to do is I'm going to try to uh, go through, explain the step, how it works, with uh, me kind of walking through it. And then I'll do it again really quickly and then I'll walk through a couple slides that basically show uh, what I did again to kind of reiterate it. And if you are following along, uh, you can go ahead and do that as well. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and uh, load up or create a new project. So let me just modify my share screen here quickly. All right, so I'm just gonna load up the Unity Hub. So I just typed Hub there. And it should look a little bit like this. So what's happening is from there, you can see all the different projects I had. Um, part of the kind of intro in instructions were to download the Unity Hub, go to your installs, which is going to be the different versions of Unity that you have. And over here, you can click the add button. And uh, the suggested one for this one was 2019.4. So that's what we call the LTS or the long-term supported. Now again, if uh, you do need to kind of create a Unity account, I forgot to mention that in the intro instructions. Um, and if you are still installing or downloading it, that's okay as well. So once you've installed the 2019.4 version of the editor, it should show up here. So you can see mine listed right there. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our projects tab and we're gonna click this new button. Now, if you have multiple versions of the editor installed, you might wanna click this little down arrow here and select the 2019.4 version. From there, it's gonna kind of tell us where it wants to put it. And I'm just gonna name this one Workshop. So I'll leave it here within the 3D templates. We've adjusted our project name, and then I can just uh, hit the Create window. So now that that is loading up there, you can see it's kind of initializing uh, within the Unity editor itself. And I'm just gonna show that one more time. So I can go to the hub. I've already installed my version, so I'm just going to the projects tab up here. And then I'm gonna click the new 2019.4 and then leave everything else default and just kind of name change this name here. You can leave it as new Unity project if you want, that's no big deal. Uh, you might wanna change the location depending on your computer, but the default one should be pretty good. And then that in the background is going ahead and loading up uh, the Unity editor. So let's give that one more moment. So if you have trouble following, um, Dan is gonna show it twice. And then if you still kind of have a little hard time, since this is the first time for a lot of you using a platform like this, uh, we are recording the video. So you'll be able to watch the video afterwards and try to repeat the steps, okay? 
Um, so don't worry too much. You cannot follow now because you can always do it later. And it's probably the best if you um, just kind of pay attention to what Dan is doing. Um, and that will be easier for you to redo it yourself later on as well, following the video. Yep. And so, yeah, I can go ahead and load up that project. And let's go ahead and let me just share uh, that specific editor here. All right. So hopefully uh, you guys are seeing the Unity editor here. So this is the default layout of the editor. And what I want to do is just kind of walk through a couple different um, windows here. So on the left hand side, we have what we call the scene hierarchy. And this is where you're going to build up your 3D scene. And it contains what we call game objects. So by default, we have a game object for the main camera, as well as the directional light. Now moving down from the scene hierarchy, we have the project hierarchy. So here on the bottom is everything contained within our project. In the project hierarchy, you have things like sound effects or 3D models. There's also textures, and this is really where you put all the content that you're gonna be using in your game. From there, on the right-hand side, we have the inspector. So the inspector gives us information about the object that we're selecting within the scene or the project. So here I'm selecting the main camera and you can see it over there on the right hand side. And last but not least here in the center, we have what we call the scene view. This is actually a 3D representation within the editor itself of how you start to build up and add logic uh, within your content. Now there's also the game view, which sits kind of behind the scene view. And this is what the camera is rendering. So you can see when I'm selecting on the camera, you can actually see a little preview here in the bottom right. And that's where we're gonna be placing all our content. So within the game view, it's all in view. So again, just to go over them quickly, we have the inspector on the left. We have the project hierarchy on the bottom. We have the scene view here in the middle and we have the inspector on the right. So let's go back to my presentation here. So to create a new project, first we've opened up the Unity Hub. I've clicked that new button uh, where you can see uh, the 2019.4. Uh, if you have different versions installed, you can click that little down arrow. And then I've named my project Workshop and hit Create. Um, so from there, that gives us the ability to create a project and then it should load up a new version of Unity. So that should look a little bit like this. That's what we have there. And from there, we've, I've kind of gone over the different uh, parts of the editor itself. And this is just kind of some terminology that will be helpful when you continue uh, to kind of learn and understand Unity. So on the left, we have the scene hierarchy, the project hierarchy, where we have things like, uh, you know, different textures or sound effects. Uh, different scripts, how we start to piece together our game. In the center there, we have the scene view. This is where we put together our 3D world. And on the right, we have the inspector, which gives us information about what we're selecting. So the next thing we want to do is let me hop back So here. Dan, just to yep. interrupt you a little bit, several people ask about it asks for a license during installation. I don't think it needs a license, but what, how do they get yeah. it? Yeah, so basically when you first start up, you do need to uh, create an account. So I kind of forgot about that. Uh, through the account creation process, you can select the personal edition. So this is basically Unity is free um, for personal use. If you're using it professional, we, professionally, we ask that you license it. Um, but just as um, for free use, you can do the personal license there, but you will need to create an account. Um, so I forgot about that. Um, and yeah, depending on uh, your age, you might need to ask your parents for some help with that. Um, so yeah, so that hopefully gives um, helps with that. So now I'm going to go back to the editor here. So here we are within the Unity uh, scene. And what I wanna talk about now is navigating around our scene. So this is important when you are starting to create a lot of this content is you need to be able to navigate around in this scene view. So in order to do that, I have my mouse over here within the scene view. 
And the first hotkey that I use is holding down the Alt key, or on Mac, it's the Option slash Alt key, and then clicking the left button on my mouse. And this allows me to rotate around. So you can see I'm kind of viewing things from different angles, and really it's moving this kind of scene camera around to look at the different objects. And this is especially important in three dimensions or in 3D. The next uh, thing we can do is we can use the scroll wheel on our mouse, or it would be uh, potentially this kind of scroll gesture on a uh, trackpad. And this allows us to zoom in and out. So you can see uh, kind of zooming in like that. And again, rotating around with the Alt key, zooming in, and then zooming out. So this is another kind of important gesture. And then the last one is we can use the right click gesture. So on our mouse, and then we can use the W, A, S, and D key to kind of fly around. So here you can see I'm moving around in the space. And again, this allows us to kind of position ourselves at different areas uh, within the scene. So this is an important part when starting to understand how to work within Unity is just understanding some of the controls on how to navigate the scene. So let me go ahead and go back to the slide here. And I'm just gonna kind of take a uh, peek into chat here uh, and see some of the Q&A. But yeah, this, these are kind of the main hotkeys uh, for navigating around the scene. And as we start to add more content, you'll see how these are important. And we are gonna start to add uh, some 3D objects here within the middle. Uh, the question was, do the arrow keys work? I think they do. Um, I think those work, again, similarly to up, down, left, and right, or W, A, S, and D. Um, so there was a question about when creating a project, just leave it on the default, which is going to be uh, 3D. All right, so it says after the download, All right, um, and so for Windows, I'm using the Alt key to do the uh, rotation. So now let's hop back in the editor and let's actually start uh, creating some content. So the first thing I wanna do in order to create content is I'm gonna click this little uh, plus button in the scene hierarchy. So this gives me the option uh, to select different objects and I'm gonna go to a 3D object here and I'm gonna create a cube. And what that does is you'll notice now I can zoom in and I have a cube here uh, within my space. So I can start to click on these little handles here and this allows me to move it around. So here you can see I'm moving it around in the X, Y, and Z axes. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create another cube. So I'm gonna create two cubes. So here's my other cube. You wanna move it up here a little bit. And one thing to note is with 3D, you have to be a little bit careful because right now it kind of looks like these cubes are next to each other. But if I hold the Alt key and look around, you'll see that they're not actually that close at all. And this is because we're just looking at it from a single perspective. So this is something to keep in mind where you need to visualize and look at things in uh, three dimensions here. So here I'm able to move it around. And the last thing we're gonna do is create another 3D object. So we're clicking this plus button in the upper left, 3D object and a sphere. And now with our sphere, we can do similar things. So now I wanna talk a little bit about how I can start to move, rotate and scale. So what we can do here is by default, we should see these little uh, icons here for kind of grabbing and moving it. And the next thing we can do is we can hit the E key on our keyboard, which gives us a different gizmo for rotating. So now I can click on one of these lines here and rotate my object around. And finally, we can hit the R key, which is the ability to scale. So I'm gonna hold Alt, and now we can scale it in certain axes. So we can do it like that, or we can uniformly scale it. So that's scaling it in all the axes by clicking this center. Uh, icon here and moving it up and then moving it down. So the next thing to do here is to create objects and try to move them around. Now, one little tip that I forgot to put in my presentation, 
but potentially you can actually uh, get to a place here in Unity where you don't see any objects. So here I've created some objects, but I don't see any within my scene. And to fix that, we can click on our objects here within the scene view. So you can see I've clicked on the sphere, hold our mouse over the scene view and hit the F key. So F as in Frank, and that will actually focus the object here within our view. So now we can start to see our objects again. So I'm gonna walk through that one more time. So I just deleted them. So I hit the plus key in the scene hierarchy, go to 3D objects cube. I can move this around. Now I'm gonna create another 3D object cube. And if you're on rotate and you wanna get back to move or translate, you can hit the W key. So that's how to get back to that. And then E is rotate. And the last thing is we wanna create one more sphere. So I've created a sphere and then we can hit R to scale it. So here I'm scaling it uniformly. We can rotate it as well, but it's not really easy to visualize or understand on a sphere since it's completely round. So I'm just kind of scaling it up and moving it around in space. So let me hop back into the slides here. So the second thing we did here was add some objects. So in our scene hierarchy, we have the ability to create objects. So we hit create, and then I've created two cubes here. So first you go create 3D object cube, and then I've also created one sphere. So that al allows us to just have what we call 3D primitives. So this is just kind of uh, 3D objects that we can start laying out um, that represent a lot of these different shapes. Now, the next important part here is that how to manipulate our objects. So when you click on an object, the three different ways you can manipulate it are to translate or move it. And you can get that gizmo with the W key. The next one is to rotate it and you can get that gizmo with the E key. And finally, you can uh, scale it and you can get that with the R key. So again, one more time with the create, you can find that in the scene hierarchy in the plus button. You can also right click within the scene hierarchy to get the create menu as well. And here we've created two cubes and one sphere. And then to manipulate them, we can do the different hotkeys after we've selected our object. So the next thing that I wanna do is I'm gonna start to lay out my scene by moving some of my objects around. So here I am back in Unity. And what I wanna do first is I wanna create a floor. So in order to do that, I'm going to rotate this cube here to be a little flatter, so something like that. And now I'm gonna scale it out in these different directions. So here we have kind of a large flat surface something like that, make it a little thinner. Now, the next thing I wanna do is I want to create a ramp. So to do that, I'm again gonna take this other cube I've created, scale it out a little bit, maybe make it a little thinner, and then now I want to rotate it. And one thing to keep in mind is we always want to be navigating and looking at our 3D objects here from these different angles. That's to really understand how they're set up. So maybe I'll make this ramp a little bit longer. So I'm gonna hit the R key, which uh, allows us to go back to scale and we can kind of scale it out like that. And then the next thing I wanna do is I wanna take this sphere and I want the sphere to roll down the ramp. So here I want to position it and maybe I'll make it a little smaller, something like this. And again, I'm kind of continuing to rotate around and now it looks like our sphere is kind of on top of this ramp. Um, and someone asked, how do I delete objects? So if we had an extra cube that we wanted like this, uh, we can just hit the delete key on Windows and it's the command plus uh, backspace key on Mac. Uh, you can also always right click on an object and go to delete. Um, and uh, there was another question about, is this available on Chromebook? Apparently, uh, unfortunately it's not available on Chromebook. And I'll talk a little bit about how to put color or expand this uh, in a moment. 
So once we've lined up our objects here, we've scaled, positioned, and rotated them around, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my sphere and go down in the inspector. In the inspector, at the very, very bottom, we have this uh, button here called Add Component. From there, this gives us access to all of the different built-in components in Unity. What I wanna do from there is I want to navigate to Physics, Rigid Body, now, it, which is right here. Now there's a little easier way to get there is that after you've selected the Add Component button, you can start typing, typing R-I-G-I, -I, which is the first part of Rigid Body. And here I want to make sure I'm using just the rigid body, not the rigid body 2D. So there I've added my rigid body. And now what this allows us to do is we've now told this sphere to interact with physics. So we've given it a physics property. So what that means is that if we start the simulation or if we do what we call playing our game, then our ball should roll down this ramp. So let's go ahead and hit that play button right here. And now we'll see what it looks like here in a moment. And there's our ball, and it looks like it rolled off the edge there. So again, just to kind of walk through that really quickly, I'm going to uh, go back and create these uh, primitives here and talk about that last step, where I've basically gone and adjusted some of the different primitives. So here we have our cube. I'm gonna move this one, hit the R key to scale it. So let's go ahead and make a floor a little bit like that. Now I'm gonna grab this other cube, moving it around here with the different gizmos. I'm gonna rotate it a little bit, and then I'm gonna scale it to be more like a ramp. So that looks good. And then lastly, let's get this sphere. So hit W to translate or move position it something like this, making sure that we're checking it from these different angles. And then on the sphere itself, I'm adding the rigid body script by going to add component at the very bottom of the inspector, typing in R-I-G-I -I to add rigid body. And then at the top of Unity, there's this play, pause, and forward or step, and I'm gonna click the play button. And if we did it right, we should be able to see our sphere roll off. Now this is again the game view, and this is what the camera renders. If we wanted to adjust what the camera renders, we could click on the camera here, and we could move this just like any other object. So here I've moved it off to the side, and now if I hit the play button, uh, you should see that simulation happen there to the side. All right, so let's hop back into the slides here really quick and walk through some of those steps. So the next thing we've done after we've gone and positioned all those objects is we've added that rigid body component. So this enables physics within our objects and allows it to start to interact. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that by default, all of these primitive objects actually have um, a collider, which is another physics component already added on. Um, so that kind of helps within the uh, physics components or the, the physics simulation by simply adding this rigid body. The next thing we've done is after we've set up our rigid body, we've clicked the play button, which is at the top of Unity up there, and that allows us to start our simulation. So here you can see I've taken it a little further. I've added some colors to my spheres as well as set up uh, some different objects there. So when the ball rolls down, it's able to knock those over. And again, if you want to simulate physics, they need to have a rigid body component. So I'm gonna quickly walk through, this is kind of just uh, extra learning here on how to change the colors. And then I'll hop back and show some additional resources. And I think we'll have some time uh, for some Q and A. So let me go back into Unity. So there was a question earlier about how to change colors. To do this, we can go within our project view. So here I am within my project hierarchy. I'm gonna right click in the project hierarchy, go to create, and then find material. Now it needs to be just a normal material, and there's lots of different things you can create here. So materials around the center. And once that happens, I'm just gonna rename this to red. 
So here, now you can see it's a sphere there or a material ball. And over here in the inspector, I can change this white in the albedo to any different color I want. So I'll, you can kind of move this around. So maybe we'll make this one like green. And then in order to apply this material to the sphere, I can simply drag and drop. So I'm just gonna drag this up there and now our sphere is green, so you can see that. So this is, again, one more time, you can uh, right click in the project hierarchy, create material, and call this one blue, and then over here in the inspector, I can change the color to blue, and then we can drag and drop. And there we go. So let's go back to the slides. All right, so hopefully that was a little bit uh, of just kind of understanding some of the editor, getting a little familiar with some of the terminology. And now I wanna leave uh, everyone with some additional resources on how to kind of continue learning and continue getting started with Unity. So in the Unity Hub, there's actually a Learn tab, but all of our learning content is available at learn.unity.com. And this has different steps for getting started as a beginner, if you're a little more experienced, um, and really all these different tutorials that allow you to learn different parts of game development and different parts of Unity. So there's also, I've added a couple uh, links here for getting started with 2D. Um, so if you're making a 2D game, as well as getting started with 3D uh, for different courses on understanding different 3D components and things like that. Um, so I have passed these links on and so we can kind of share these after the fact as well. Um, but I really suggest starting with that learn.unity.com. Um, so that is pretty much it for my presentation. So now I think we have some time for Q&A or I'll try to answer some of the questions uh, that I see here uh, within the Q&A and within chat. And I just want to say thanks again for everyone for coming. And of course, thanks, uh, Jesse and team for uh, inviting me here. Uh, so there's a question, how do you rotate again? So that's going to be the E key. Uh, so the hotkeys there are W, E, and R, which are right there at the top of the keyboard. Uh, to create the cube, you're going to hit the plus button in the inspector, uh, hit create, and then 3D objects. And then there's going to be a cube and the other primitives. I didn't mention too much about programming, but I did see some questions. So Unity uses the C Sharp programming language. So that's developed by Microsoft and uh, it allows uh, you to basically write scripts within Unity. You can also write custom tools within Unity um, and things like that. So someone asked how to zoom in with the scene. You can use the scroll wheel uh, on your mouse. Uh, there was a question about, can we install the student version or the personal version? Um, the F key and about the F key. So F key focuses, if you've selected an object, it'll focus it within your scene view. Um, and if you do have access to the student version and you're a student, you can use that as well. Those are usually managed through the educational institutions themselves. Um, there was questions about, do you have a specific device that you need for Unity? Uh, the editor itself works on PC, Mac, and Linux. Um, but we deploy to uh, Android mobile phones, iOS, uh, really any platform, PlayStation, Nintendo Switch, uh, Xbox, AR, and VR. Uh, there's a question, how much money do you need to get into XR development in Unity? Um, really, it depends on what devices or hardware you might have access to. I think there's lots of tutorials and content you can start creating without access to devices, so potentially the uh, the answer there is, is free or, or no money. It's really just about getting started, uh, learning Unity, and then kind of uh, adding different tooling and stuff from there. So there was a question about Unity timeline with Cinemachine. So this is kind of a way to sequence things together uh, as well as create more of a procedural camera system. There are tutorials and things available on our Learn site for those, so I recommend checking that out. Uh, the scale key is going to be R for the gizmo. 
Um, so Unity, there's some questions about, you know, is there some games on the App Store from Unity? Um, we do have some sample projects and things like that, but as a company, uh, we at Unity, we don't actually develop games. Uh, we just enable creators to, to create games there. Um, so there's a couple things like a remote and we've done a couple event applications, uh, but not some, some uh, like full games and things like that. Let's go ahead. Oh yeah, I was gonna say, someone asked, can you publish your game to the App Store? Yes, you can, you can definitely do that. Um, really the different App Stores and different platforms kind of have their own specific uh, requirements, but um, yeah, there's been Unity games and applications published on you know, nearly every App Store uh, in every platform. Uh, in one, uh, there have been versions of Temple Run that are made uh, in Unity. I saw that question as well. Someone asked what my favorite game is. I'm really into Animal Crossing right now. Um, and uh, I play a lot of Super Smash Brothers. They're some of my favorite games. What was your first game you like ever played? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. So the first, the question was, what was the first game I ever played? Um, so I actually, I, I want to say it was Super Mario on the original uh, Nintendo Entertainment System. Uh, my parents got that for me, and my brother and I uh, were playing it in our basement. So I think that was probably the first game that I played, uh, is just the original Super Mario. Cool. Um, how do you activate the license for the um, program? Yeah, so once you've created an account, uh, there should be a small little uh, kind of walkthrough and you choose different licenses, um, but you do need to log into the hub itself. Um, I kind of forgot to cover that um, because obviously, I, you know, I kind of have an account, so I forgot to mention that. But yeah, uh, what you'll need to do is create a Unity 3D account. You can do that on the web and then in the hub, you can log into that. So I hope, hope. Uh, that answers the question. Okay, thank you. Um, do you still have, uh, or the Uplay services still online? So the Unity multiplayer services? Yeah, yeah, so the question was around our multiplayer services. Um, right now, uh, we do have some kind of legacy support, but we have uh, depreciated some of our network uh, APIs and settings there. Um, so those aren't really fully supported. Uh, we do recommend some kind of uh, community solutions like Photon, uh, which is a good networking solution. Uh, and we are kind of working on revamping some of those uh, internally. Uh, but right now, the, the Unity networking uh, has been officially depreciated. Um, so we recommend looking at uh, potentially other third-party services. Uh, and Photon is a popular one available on the Asset Store. Okay, can those still be, um, can Photon be exported to Oculus for Android? Yeah, yep. Um, yeah, a lot of the uh, Photon, as my understanding, is completely cross-platform. Uh, when I was using it uh, before joining Unity, uh, we had it running on Android and other platforms there. Uh, so something like the Oculus Quest uh, should support that. Okay, great. Cool, well, those are pretty advanced questions. <laughs> Um, so you said that Unity, um, Unity didn't really um, create games, so what, what's its main function? Yeah, so um, the question was, you know, Unity doesn't really create games. So the main function of Unity is, as a company, is to empower other creators to make games. So we build this uh, core tool along with additional services, and really it's to enable creators of all different kinds all over the world to build the different games and applications that they want to make. So we kind of build that uh, core layer that other people can develop on top of. Uh, hi. So my question is, how did you get into, like, into coding? Like, what inspired you or who inspired you in getting into coding? Yeah, that's a great question. So the question was, how did I get into coding or what inspired me? So originally when I was in college, I was just playing a lot of video games and I was really into video games. Uh, and so I started kind of pursuing video game development, but actually it was more on the kind of production side. So I wasn't doing a ton of coding. Um, I started working with a small team where I kind of had an idea and me and some friends got together uh, and started just kind of working on a game. 
originally we had two developers, but one of the developers actually uh, had to drop off the project. So we didn't have uh, another developer to kind of continue working on it. So I actually worked with the other developer who still was on the project uh, and kind of he helped me really get started with coding. Uh, I took a couple computer science classes uh, in college and that helped as well to get kind of some foundational knowledge. Um, but really it was my buddy, uh, I guess, Matt, uh, back in the day and he kind of pushed me to pursue coding and uh, kind of continue on with the development in order to create the project uh, that we all wanted to create. That's really cool. Yeah, thank you. Unity. Like, you, like the time like in the game when the ball goes down, I oh. forgot how to type that. Yeah, so there is a, um, oh, it's rigid body. So it's R-I-G-I -I, um, and it's in the physics component. So when you add a rigid body, uh, to the sphere, then you can hit the play button. So I think I can actually. Uh, can you like share your screen? Yeah, can you see it right there? Yeah. So, like over here. Yeah, there's an add component button at the very bottom of the inspector, which should be on the right hand side. And. Okay. So, like. So like which one like near the default material and down there it's like yep at the very very bottom there should be an add component button. What was the first game that you played? Not played, um, created. Yeah, so the first game I created uh, was probably um, it, or it was in uh, in college. So I was in some game development courses, uh, and it was called uh, Pangea Arctica. So it was the game about a explorer up in the Antarctic region. So they were exploring different cave, uh, caves and kind of ice structures. And it was kind of a third person game where uh, you kind of followed a character as they were walking around. Uh, and then the final battle uh, was you against a wolf. So it was actually made in Unity. Um, so this was uh, over, probably over 10 years ago. Um, so it was in a much earlier version of Unity. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, it was, yeah, me kind of working with a small team and you were, uh, kind of exploring the Arctic region. So that involved killing? Um, it involved some battle, um, with the, uh, with the wolf there, you and the wolf. And, uh, I guess you could say he went to sleep, uh, once the battle was over. Okay. <laughs> what would be a good way to start learning to code with Unity for a beginner? Yeah, that's a great question. So the question was, what would be a good way to start learning um, to code with Unity? So there is a uh, C Sharp course that's available on the Learn platform. It was actually created in collaboration with Microsoft. So I recommend uh, checking that out. It kind of introduces you to some basics and really, um, you know, C Sharp in general uh, is, you know, a widely supported and used language. Within the Unity context, it gets a little bit more narrow uh, with some of what we call the different APIs that are available in Unity. Um, but I suggest starting out with those courses on our Learn platform. And then just in general, when people are getting started out, I always recommend choosing a really small idea that you want to try to do um, and just pursuing that to kind of stay motivated and things. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Okay, that's a great question. Um, with that, um, Dan, thank you so much. That was an awesome talk. Um, you know, Unity is definitely very advanced, um, but, you know, as you guys started, I know some of you just started learning coding as you learn um, Scratch and then some of the other areas, and then you will be able to start um, coding in Unity in no time. And I do want to kind of finish up with showing you some of the classes we offer. Uh, some of these are coding classes. You can go to create-learn.us to sign up for some of these classes. We do have some really fun um, open classes coming up. The next one is actually someone by Na uh, from NASA talking about their mission to Mars, which is really cool. Um, we also have these summer camps that we're running now. They're specials. Uh, so I hope that more of you guys can take the opportunity during the summer to learn about coding 
and hopefully that uh, you'll be able to start doing Unity soon. We are trying to, I was actually talking to Dan before this class that we're trying to get someone to help us develop Unity curriculum so more students can learn Unity as well. Awesome. With that, thank you again, Dan. That was awesome. Really appreciate it. And thank you everyone for joining today. Um, hopefully you have started some of the um, uh, coding classes and try out Unity as well. We're going to send out the, um, yeah, so we're going to send out the video for this one. If, in case you didn't get a chance to follow it, go ahead and uh, um, watch the video and try to do that. Looks like some of you really enjoyed it. All right. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot. And thanks a lot for having me. All right. Thank you. And thank you, Dan. Really appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. Bye.